Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc and today again I'm going to do what I love to do. We're going to talk about addiction and about what that means. Well, <clears throat> you know what's interesting folks is that every day, as long as you've got a pulse, you're experiencing life. And every day life throws things at you. Issues, stuff, expected or unexpected, that we have to deal with. <sighs> And the first way that we deal with it is to dissipate the emotional tension that comes from that anxiety, stress, depression, anger, fear, frustration, sadness, boredom, and pleasure. We have to have ways that trigger just the instant dissipation of that emotional tension by activating the endorphin system. But folks, there's always an issue that drove that emotional tension. And today, we're going to talk about the pathology of psychologic hoarding. This video is called Psychologic Hoarding. Now, for those of you that watch TV and you like that hoarder show, think about hoarding. Obviously, it's a psychologic disorder, but if you think about hoarding, hoarding is where people gather up a whole bunch of stuff that they think in the future they're going to need. So, for example, I had one patient in Jacksonville a while ago who would hoard all the newspapers, and they had a newspaper subscription, but they couldn't read the newspapers every day, so they piled them up. And eventually, when you walk through their home, there were these corridors of newspapers stacked up here from a decade ago. I'll get to them. I'll eventually get to them. But they, they put them there, and they don't quite get to them. And they hoard them. Or other things that they know they're going to use one day. And they hoard them, they keep them there, but they don't ever use them, they don't ever process them. And they keep all this cluster there, and it's kind of a control thing, it's kind of, I can't let stuff go. I'm not going to talk about the psychology, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to talk about the psychology of hoarding, but everybody understands, if you've watched those TV shows, you understand what hoarding stuff is all about, and I'm going to get to it, I'm going to do it, but eventually they've got their little corridors through this hoarding crap, and they're oblivious to the fact that they've even hoarded. They, you walk into their house and you, seriously, you live here? But they don't recognize it, they don't see it. And it is a psychological form of control. Okay, what the hell has that got to do with psychologic hoarding? Well, a healthy human being encounters life, life throws stuff at us, we have issues that we have to deal with every day, and we've got, number one, a mechanism that dissipates emotional tension, but a healthy emotional tension dissipating mechanism also connects us to our subconscious, where we've stacked and hoarded the issues that caused our emotional tension, and a healthy effort-based emotion management system allows us to dissipate that emotional tension and connect with our subconscious and identify and process or let go of or deal with those issues that we've repressed into our subconscious. And at the end of going for a walk or a moment of prayer or painting or listening to some music, where we've relaxed and we've connected with that and processed that issue, we feel pretty darn proud of ourselves that we're feeling better, we've dissipated the emotional tension, and we've uncluttered, we've decluttered our subconscious. The problem with addiction, the problem with the use of instantly gratifying substances and behaviors, whether it is pornography, whether it's gambling, um, whether it is yelling and shouting and screaming to absolve, to absolve emotional tension. I was very good at that in my old day. Whether it is using a substance, <sighs> cigarette, carbohydrate, alcohol, heroin, <sighs> I haven't done those things, so if I'm not portraying it accurately, for those of you who've done it, help me out. But the point is that when we use substances, they give us instant spike-like endorphin release. But on the back end of that is negativity, harm, guilt, and repression, hoarding, 
in our subconscious of the issues that drove that emotional tension. And we never process it. We just use drugs and behaviors to keep repressing it. And eventually those things build up and build up and clutter. And the most awful experiences I have with my patients, and it's so, so sad. But boys and girls that were abused and never ever posted, it's there, but it becomes part of the corridor of hoarded emotions, hoarded issues that they navigate without looking at. It might be a diagnosis of something. It might be feeling awful that you're not good enough. It might even be something more trivial. But we hoard those things. And we don't process them. And then we need more and more instantly gratifying substances and behaviors to shut them up from yapping at us. They scream at us when we're asleep. They scream at us when we're sad and depressed. But we shut them up with drugs and behaviors that are instantly gratifying. And I know it can be incredibly traumatic to process them. But isn't that what therapy is all about? Therapy is about an empathetic human connection where you can trust that the person that you're interacting with, whether they're a friend or a therapist, is not going to be judgmental or critical of you. And you can take the risk of exposing that vulnerability, of taking some of that hoarded shit and vomiting it out and processing it. Maybe you can do that in a relationship with a higher power. Maybe you can do that while you're on your walk or while you're painting or listening to music. But if we don't unclutter on a regular basis the emotional issues that we're hoarding, we're just practicing psychological hoarding. And it gets worse and worse and worse. And the addiction gets worse and worse and worse. And we are less effective as human beings if we don't unclutter our subconscious space. We all hoard, folks. But spring cleaning your mind is critically important to being healthy. I do this every day. But giving you these insights through this video hopefully helps you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what, it's scary. It's scary. But if I can look at those issues from the past that I've hoarded and say, hey, I see you. I know you're there. I know you're not going away. But you don't scare me. I can stare at you. I can look at you. It's all good. You become a more effective person if you can declutter your life on a regular basis. I hope this helps. Make some comments. Use an effort-based emotion management system to connect with your subconscious rather than substance abuse to repress those issues. If you need help, text 561-517-0642. We deal with carbohydrate addiction. We deal with diabetes. We deal with obesity. If we can help, we're out there. But follow me on Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I hope this helps. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. I can see inside your head. Mm -hmm.